When most millennials get trapped in a conversation about the Federal Reserve, they nod politely and look desperately for an exit. But if you want to understand the Fed, just think of wedding planners. What makes every wedding a success? Love? Wrong. Alcohol. The alcohol needs to flow or else no one dances. What makes every economy a success? Money. The money needs to flow or else people lose their jobs. The Fed influences the economy just like your wedding planner influences your wedding. Both make sure that the party is bumping, but not so bumping that your Uncle Morty gets wasted and tries to bump the wedding cake. The Fed has two main jobs, control inflation and ensure maximum employment and production output. That's a fancy way of saying they want to manage the amount of booze per person and ensure everyone is on the dance floor, finding that happy medium between slow dancing and twerking. The wedding planner keeps everyone in line by utilizing items in their toolbox. Get it? Toolbox? Anyway, pretend that the money flowing in the economy is the same thing as the alcohol flowing at your wedding. The Fed and your wedding planner each have three tools to regulate the flow. The first one is about telling banks how much cash they need to have in their vaults. That's called the reserve requirement. Every bank needs to have a certain amount of cash on hand because sometimes people use the bank to get their money and not just to play with that weird tube thing. The more a bank has to keep in its reserves, the less money they'll lend to people as loans. The wedding planner gets to tell bartenders how much alcohol to keep on hand. If you're a bartender and you need to stock up on a lot of alcohol, you're probably going to pour conservatively. The drinks will be weak and the dance floor will be lamer than a middle school prom. There's no such thing as a middle school prom. That's how lame it's going to be. So the lower the reserve requirement, the stronger the drinks, the bigger the loans, and the better the party. Yeah. Another thing the Fed can do is buy or sell bonds in order to change how much physical cash is in the system. Bonds are like little IOUs the government gives you when you lend them money. So let's pretend again that the banks are the bartenders at your wedding. If there's not enough alcohol on hand, your party planner goes to the liquor store to get you more. This helps the party get rowdy, just like the Fed grows the money supply by exchanging bonds for cash. On the flip side, if there's so much alcohol available that the best man is already on his third toast, then the party planner can probably hang on to a few handles of Jose Cuervo. So the last thing the Fed can do is called adjusting the discount rate. This one's, well, like, okay, so here it is. The Fed can lend cash out to banks, but banks have to pay interest. The Fed decides what that interest is and they call that the discount rate. The higher the rate, the more expensive the loan and the less likely a bank will want to borrow money. If you're at a wedding, your planner probably won't be selling booze. You would hope. So the analogy isn't perfect, but neither is the Fed. But the gist is, if the wedding planner makes alcohol cheaper, it's more likely that your cousins start stripping and trying to make out with each other. So besides some macroeconomic theory, that's a good overview if you need talking points at a wedding dinner. You can learn more, but not from us. For now, why don't you just focus on enjoying yourself at a wedding? And remember, if your economy's slow, you just gotta give it a shot of scotch. That's it for this week. See you next week. And until then, here's something good. Fed. Fed. I don't use this paper. I just keep it here to make me look smart. <laughs>